O'Brien. What's going on, folks? This is Jacob filling in for Tom O'Brien. Let's take a look what we got going on today. All right, so ES Mini, we're up about 0.47%. The Russell burned a little bit at 1.22%. The NQ's up 0.97%. The Dow Futures down a little bit. Of course, the NQ's are doing pretty well, and we'll talk a little bit about everything going on with tech. Looking forward here, let's take a look at gold. Uh, you know, we broke down here. All right, so we're trading at the 2050 level, currently at 2038.70. Um, again, this is really just in this kind of sideways moving pattern here. And we're seeing also, I, I think probably on a long term, so with the larger market until we get some pretty popping news. You know, everything that went on with AI today could be a good excuse for the market just to really continue to rip higher, make these all time highs. All right, let's take a look at uh, silver down, you know, not really anything today, trading at 2263. Copper continues to move down on that contract, uh, trading at 368. Of course, we were eyeing uh, almost four and, and, you know, looking at a 404 price target for copper. Um, of course, nothing is linear, so we'll see kind of how this responds uh, in the days ahead. Okay, crude oil also going up as well at 76.57. I think there's some talk too that uh, there's going to be even larger winter storms. I guess the uh, the rodent that they have up in uh, Pennsylvania wasn't right about spring. I don't know. Anyways, crude oil is trading up 76.55 right now. I think energy costs are probably going to go up for a little time going forward. Let's take a look. Tesla rebounding a little bit up at 192, almost back to that 200 area. Of course, we gap down. Uh, around this level on January 24th and then gap down, uh, excuse me, gap down here on January 25th on some quite significant volume. Uh, and we'll see if we can get back up there. Uh, some issues going forward for Tesla, even with local competition, which we'll talk a little bit about uh, when we come back from the main break. Still Dynamics trading 124.35. Something interesting to note about them. Okay, this is some pretty late volume too. This movement upwards, right? Um, You've also had some of the execs selling some of their shares over the past six months uh, with, with no buybacks. And, and that doesn't mean anything, right? I, I mean, they could just be cashing out and, you know, they like this price point and, 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 you know, whatever. There's plenty of reasons why, but it is something interesting to note, I guess. I had read a little bit about that yesterday. Uh, DXY, we're still in the 104 area. Uh, of course, coming back down a little bit from that 104.64 level, 104.60. Uh, and just really hovering for the past uh, three days here at the 104 level. Q's ripping at 437.10. Google, even more so, they rebranded their uh, personal AI, which was Bard. It's now Gemini. Gemini is the suite of tools that they use. And I guess they wanted to rename it Bard, or excuse me, rename it from Bard uh, to Gemini. Uh, so anyways, they're up today. We'll talk some more about them as well. Meta, 469. Disney back down a little bit. From that 112 high that we've seen and that's let me see if on the i mean come on this is pretty nice well obviously it's year to date we're in february i mean we haven't seen these levels in quite a while uh, so it's pretty nice and that was on significant volume uh as well you have apple trading at 188.77 uh and then the spy of course we're up above that 500 level at 501 in nine cents all right, cool. So what's going on today? Well, you had PepsiCo come out with earnings. Uh, nobody liked them. Let me see real quick on the ticker for it. Pretty self-evident. Pep. So we're down about 3% today. So what is going on with PepsiCo? On Friday, they reported mixed quarterly, uh, quarterly results. It's North American demand for its food and drinks weakened. Uh, the CEO said that the U.S. sales broadly slowed down in the fourth quarter. Part of that slowdown is due to pricing, disposable income situations, uh, he told investors on the company's conference call. He added that U.S. consumers are also shifting their behavior from eating and drinking at home to picking up more of their snacks and Gatorade from convenience stores. Um, but LaGuardia expressed optimism about the overall state of the consumer, setting low unemployment and hopes that interest rates will fall by the summer and wages will rise faster than inflation. Uh, of course, fell 3%. The earnings per share on that was 178 adjusted versus 172 expected. Uh, revenue was 2785 
versus $284 billion. Uh, Pepsi reported fourth quarter income that was net of $1.3 billion, uh, up from $518. Of course, I feel like Pepsi is pretty dominant in some of the food away from home areas. Like, it's kind of, I, I don't know. It's For me, I don't see Coke as much if I go out. I don't drink soda, but I definitely, you know, see what they have on the menu and everything like that. And, uh, you know, at least in some of your, you know, let's say Chipotle or something like that, they're, they're running uh, brands like Pepsi. So interesting to see kind of if, if they can really even make a big comeback against some of the bigger brands. Uh, let's talk about, you know, what really the big news is, too. And this is NVIDIA. This is ARM. This is the future of chips entirely. Okay, NVIDIA, I mean, yeah, I was talking to Tommy earlier, and I <laughs> hadn't even seen it ramp up like this. It's in the past few days, you know? Up at 718 right now, um, up 3.18%. I would talk a little bit about NVIDIA. This is what I like about this stock, okay? Yeah, they're, they're valued extremely high, right? But this is a large behemoth of a company that is continuing to innovate, right? This isn't like they're in some kind of cash cow phase where they have a product that people like and it's just, you know, inside of the culture. I mean, they're constant, constantly adapting. Their GPUs are getting better. They're coming up with different kinds of products for whether you're using ho home GPUs, whether you're doing, you know, AI learning. I think they're starting to develop TPUs, which are tensor processing units, huge with Google. Um, I'll check on that on the break um, regarding NVIDIA and TPUs, but these are going to be introduced into the basically general AI education. And then DPUs, which are massive, right? We'll talk kind of how that all works and, and why it matters and um, you know, what these things do. But, but NVIDIA is continuing to make themselves uh, com competitive, even though they're sitting at this uh, pretty high stock price, which is, which is nice to see. And of course, too, I think they probably have to, to kind of meet up with the expectations that investors obviously have at, at a price point of 700 uh, and 18 shares. Uh, of course, we're about to go to the break, but you had big stories, obviously, with Sam Altman coming out and saying he won $7 trillion to kind of plan out a massive infrastructure for um, for AI. And we'll talk a little bit about, about that when we get back. Stay right there.